How do you make sure that the artists who, uh, who you work with still can label themselves as independent loudly uh, instead of that people say, okay, but it's because of Empire, they're with Empire, stuff like that. Because I know uh, like 2020, yeah, like in 2020, there was something about Dove that he says he's independent, but he's with Empire, he's not really independent. But how do you still uh, make the path for them? to walk as an independent artist. But they are independent. I'm independent. Yeah. So together we're independent. <laughs> we're independent of major labels. Mm -hmm. It's all a matter of perspective, right? Empire is the largest indie in the United States. Yeah. I've paired myself with some of the largest independent artists in the United States and together we're independent. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple explanation to yeah. me. That whole revolution or a revolution, it's maybe a big word for it, but This is, this, by, by the way, uh, sorry not to pause you, but there's a difference between DIY and independent. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Yes. There's, there's DIY, independent, and major. And most people just only talk about being indie or major. Yeah. That whole independent conversation, we had it for years, past years. And there are a lot of artists that have more power and, you know, have more leverage. You see that in the music industry. You see that with the major labels, the whole the whole market is changing. Um, for instance, what you see is like, you know, I think I speak for both of us. We're not re really like that numbers persons. We don't chase. Oh, he did this first week. But you see a change in that artists are moving more DIY, I would say. Mm. Um, it has to move DIY. There's not enough room for everybody at a label. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. And I, you know, I'm a fan of the DIY movement because it gives people an opportunity to make a living off something they love doing that they didn't have an opportunity to do in previous generations. Yeah. So I'm a fan of DIY. Um, there's not, there isn't that many empires out there. Yeah. Right? There's very few independent labels left in the world. Yeah. So, and how many artists can I potentially sign before I cannibalize my own success, right? So true. Um, I'm a big fan of DIY. It, it needs to be there. There needs to be that funnel. There needs to be that opportunity for people Yeah, to be able to push their creativity and make a living off doing something they love. It's a whole lot better than working at Starbucks. Not, yeah. not that there's anything wrong with working at Starbucks, mm -hmm. but You're doing what you love. But 20 years ago, if you worked at Starbucks and you were a musician, your only chance at making it as a musician was to get signed. Yeah. And now that's not true. Yeah. You could take that $20 or $15 an hour you make at Starbucks and go buy a rig from Guitar Center and go home and make some records. And next thing you know, You're making more money doing that than your nine to five. And that ultimately becomes your nine to five and ultimately becomes potentially even greater than that and so on and so forth. Are we living in a time where we're seeing the last big, big pop stars being created because of that? Because there's no humongous organization behind it. You will see more niche artists that 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 cater to their audience that that serve their audience more little little movements more you know like i think we're just going into a more niche market in general because we're going global global yeah, yeah. the market is going global like geographically localized to where you're from you know um previous generations everybody consume western content that's no longer the case facts so yeah. you know it's just the, the nature of consumption people want to be fans of things that live breathe and walk that are representative of where they come from that they feel emotionally attached to yeah you know when i look at an artist like iliana and she's palestinian and she's from a city 20 minutes north of where my family's from and my daughter is growing up as a palestinian child and then now she has a superstar to look up to that's her equivalent of beyonce or shakira yeah. or rihanna and then previous generations people didn't have that those localized superstars. You had it in some places. Latin America had some of it. Um, But Bobby, in general, Bobby there was Wood. one big pop star. Everybody yeah, was fan yeah, of But yeah. that will that will decline. That will change. I don't know if it'll decline. Uh, I think there, there's always going to be room for superstars that unify the planet. I mean, look at a, look at Shibuzi. He has potential to be that type of an artist, right? Um, because he stands for so much for so many people from so many walks of life. He's Nigerian. He's African-American and he's making country, but he's also making pop with also with elements of hip hop. So a lot of people are going to find that relatable to their story and to their life. 
um, genre bashing is 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 yeah. what are genres these days? But Europe has always been genre agnostic, mm -hmm. more so than the United States. Uh, when broadcast radio was predominant in Europe, which it still is in certain countries, but you would hear all kinds of records back to back that uh, if you were a DJ at a party, you wouldn't probably play those records back to back. <laughs> but when you're serving a wide audience, they made sense. Yeah. They made sense for the audience. Um, so I'm a super fan of what's happening. Uh, it's something that I always hoped would happen and I always wanted to be on the forefront of it. And I think we are. So I think it's making, we're making some of the greatest music we've ever heard.